video should probably be in better quality now. I didn't realize the camera it's better than I expected, but okay. So I'm gonna do an Epsilon Delta proof from the, the brick. It's on page 92. Exercises 1.5, exercise number 15. Okay, so most of this video isn't actually a proof. It's how you write delta in terms of epsilon. So delta is not always in terms of epsilon, but in this case it is, and in most cases it is. So, okay, let's do it. Guess it's going to take longer to upload, but whatever. So, the first thing you should do when you d approach trying to do an epsilon delta proof is substitute the value x is tending to, the function, and the limit straight into the definition. So what's the definition? For epsilon greater than zero exists delta greater than zero. For x element domain of f, zero less than x minus the value x tends to, so half less than delta implies the function minus the limit, 1 minus 4x squared over 1 minus 2x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So like I said at the beginning, we're trying to write delta in terms of epsilon. So the basic strategy for doing that is to look at the consequent of the implication and try to rearrange it, manipulate it, so that it looks like this. When we do that, we'll have some sort of constant, sometimes not a constant, moved over onto the epsilon side and then we can just say let del delta equal epsilon along with that other material. So let's concentrate on this, I'll rub it out and we'll work on that. So we have 1 minus 4x squared over 1 minus 2x minus 2 so I'm not going to write less than delta, I'll do that at the end. Sorry, less than epsilon, I'll do that at the end. So, first thing you want to notice is that this, the numerator of the function is a difference of two squares. And also, the denominator will never equal zero because x never actually becomes a half, it only tends to a half. So, factoring by difference of two squares, we get 1 minus 2x, 1 plus 2x, all over 1 minus 2x, minus 2, absolute value of all that. So, because the denominator never actually equals 0, we can cancel it out. So you get 1 plus 2x minus 2, 2x minus 1. Now we're going to have to use some properties of absolute values. So I suggest looking that up on Wikipedia or somewhere else. There's a lot of useful useful things. One thing that is very commonly used is the, is the triangle inequality. So I'll probably do a whole video on that. So let's factor the 2 out. And the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. So the absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of minus of x minus a half 
the absolute value of 2 is just 2 so this is looking good so now now I'm gonna put in the less than epsilon so I guess you can see what we're gonna do we're gonna divide by 2 and we get epsilon on 2 that's our value of delta so we found our value of delta so note that this is the x minus what x is tending to so that's what we were trying to do so I won't actually go through dividing I'll do the, the epsilon delta proof now hmm okay let's see the proof so the way you start the proof is you say given epsilon greater than zero let delta equal whatever you found epsilon on two hence we assume the antecedent the the if statement hence if zero less than x minus a half I think you can see where this is going <laughs> so what I'm going to okay yeah so let's start hence if this then this pretty obvious it's good so let's start manipulating that and what we're going to do is going to ma manipulate it back into being the function minus the limit okay so I just rub this out and save more room. Okay. Says you. You definitely want that less than epsilon now. <laughs> epsilon two. Okay. So multiply by two. Two x minus a half less than epsilon. The absolute value of 2 is 2. That's an epsilon. So, product of absolute values is the absolute value of the product. 2x minus a half. That's an epsilon. Multiply that out. 2x minus 1. That's an epsilon. Let's go over here. So, yep, go from here to here. So we want to, uh, hmm, what do we want to do again? Hmm. probably edit this waiting period out <laughs> oh yeah obviously sorry <sighs> getting late so we want to subtract one and add one 2x plus 1 minus 2 that's an epsilon now we can this is equal to that so we can put it back together into this function so we just say 1 plus 2x 1 minus 2x all over 1 minus 2x that's obviously the same minus 2 less than epsilon so this is the function so we've just done our first epsilon delta proof so 
So this was the consequent of the implication. So we're, we're finished. And because epsilon was arbitrary, uh, the proof holds. So that's really cool. So we do full stop, do our square, and we're done.